Turnings that require hollowing end grain include hollow forms, goblets, baby's rattles, miniature birdhouses where both the top and bottom are hollowed, egg cups, and boxes such as this one made from a three quarter inch square pen blank. End grain is relatively dense, but its structure is more consistent than side grain. So some of the techniques and tools for hollowing end grain are different than hollowing the interior of say a face grain bowl. The blank is held in a four jaw chuck and the spindle orientation with the grain in line with the lathe's bed. I usually use a 3 8 inch spindle gouge when hollowing goblet scoops in small bowls. Rotate the gouge so that when a pencil is placed on top of the flutes, the top is pointing between one and two o'clock. Make sure that the tool is level and adjust the tool rest so that the tip is at dead center. Push the tool straight in. The chip will uh, act as a drill or an auger and can easily reach a depth of one to two inches. Here you'll see some smoke, but that's uh, because of the heat generated, but with high speed seal, it's not a problem. It'll be necessary sometimes to wiggle the handle a bit to help with the clearance at the tip as you go deeper. Remove the tip once you reach the desired depth, and I usually mark that on the gouge. Now with the tool in the same orientation, position the tip and in a series of cut, expand the starter hole. As the hollow continues, it will be necessary to draw out the tip and pivot the tool. Very often people don't swing the tool far enough over. What happens is you start coming up the side grain and you want to make sure that handles well over. Although this is mostly a scraping action, because the cutting edge is angled, the shear scraping cut can be surprisingly smooth and end grain. The disadvantage is that the vibration and chatter can occur because of the relatively small cross section of a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. You could try to use the detail gouge, but the shallow flute makes that hard to eject the chips on the initial boring. If the surface needs improving, I often use a scraper. In this case, it's a scraper with a small radius tip, about an inch in diameter. I make sure I adjust the tool rest height so when the scraper's angled down slightly for a shear scraping cut, I'm pretty much on center. Usually a few passes with the scraper gives the end grain a very nice surface. This is another view. Notice when I come up the side, I rotate the scraper a bit more, and that seems to help smooth the side grain. When hollowing deeper than two inches, I use a twist drill, either mounted in a Jacobs chuck, or I use one with a Morse taper that'll fit directly into the quill of the tailstock. This is a typical drilling operation, but you know, you, again, you just wanna make sure that you clear the chips depending on what type of drill bit you use. And of course, there's an endless number of uh, bits to use and uh, some specialty bits with carbide tips, even hollow shafts that help eject chips. Instead of using a spindle gouge, a hollowing tool fitted with a 3 inch inch high-speed steel cutter or one of the many uh, new carbide tip tools could be used and uh, they'll definitely be able to easily handle dense end grain. Uh, the edge can also be angled with these tools similar to the scraper and the spindle gouge that'll uh, help produce a sheer scraping action. Well okay for you bowl turners out there you know after the boring the center hole you could, you could try to hollow the end grain by going towards the center uh, Usually you'll have a problem like I just did here and, and that you can get a skate. The advantage of going right directly into the center with a spindle gouge is that it's not moving. So um, here I am again, I adjusted the tool rest. I'm closing the flute. I'm now trying to get a, a decent cut and it is cutting. And 
course, you know, there's always a chance of escape. And then going in this direction, um, an, another problem is that the, uh, the surface is usually rough uh, because as you're moving the cut down, uh, the fibers are unsupported and they tend to splinter out. So good luck. Another approach in hollowing end grain is to use a hook or a ring tool. In this case, starting from the left is the one-way termite tool, um, a homemade tool that I made, a Michael Huzluk tool, and at the end was a hook tool that I found at a garage sale. Most of my experience with a hook or is really a, a ring tool made by one-way. It's called the termite tool. And they suggest uh, that you keep the tool rest about an inch away from the face of the work. And you keep the cutter um, almost vertical. And you can um, cut into the very center of the end grain, as is shown. And once you do develop and get the edge in the right orientation, you can get very nice shavings off of it. The challenge uh, for me very often is to eliminate that center cone. A starter hole helps eliminate that problem with the cone in the center. And again, with the proper orientation of that cutter nearly vertical or rotated slightly to the right, you can go ahead and get some beautiful shavings. I will say though that you need a lot of practice and there's skill that needs to be developed. The biggest concern is if that cutter rotates up too far horizontally you can get a spectacular and very memorable catch and uh, for that reason um, a turner like Raleigh Monroe developed and sells a ring tool with a shield that limits the cut and there are also tools now that use round carbide cutters mounted in such a way to help prevent aggressive feeding. This last cut is called the back hollowing cut and um, it goes against all convention and I had the good fortune of having Richard Raffin showed me how to do it in person when I took a class with him. Here I'm cleaning up the face of the uh, blank and starting from the center with the flute closed, I am starting to hollow the center and then I'm moving the gouge uh, up to the one or two o'clock position if you think of it as a clock face. Uh, again, this is a type of cut that takes considerable practice and if you have someone who knows how to do it show you, I would highly recommend that that's the way you learn how to do it.